had this game that I would play uh, when I was a kid that I would write down on pieces of paper. And it's my name and the date and the time and, and maybe a few thoughts and I'd just hide them. And um, they were like time capsules. And it was always fascinating to dig them up, even if it was just a week later, to think about that time, that span that had gone on and how I'd changed and how the exterior had changed. Michael Kenna works alone. He doesn't bring an army of assistants. He is a man who lives in solitude, enjoys solitude. He's a long distance runner. And that solitude, that sense of being alone in a vast space is the heart of his work. You look at those landscapes and you can imagine yourself there. There are no other people intentionally. He wants the viewer to imagine themselves to be in that landscape alone in the beauty of the world. I probably do have a warped sense of uh, light and dark and, uh, and time. I grew up in a small town called Witness, uh, which is in the northwest of England, very close to the city of Liverpool. I spent you know, the first 10 years, even though I had this large family, it seemed that I spent most of it in my own imagination and on my own. Um, I spent a lot of time in the, in the local parks. Um, you know, I had my favorite trees, and, and uh, I would spend a lot of time on the local railway station, or I would go for uh, long walks, you know, through the city at night, along the river, you know, one or two o'clock in the morning. Um, Witness was a very uh, industrial town, so there were a lot of factories, um, and, you know, that was, that was fine with me. I, I spent a lot of time very, very close to industry, and I think that influenced considerably what I photographed later on. So many of the things that I photograph now, whether it's, you know, interior architecture with a certain atmosphere, whether it's the, the bridges or, or the, the, the seasides or, or, or the parks, or, you know, there, there are so much related to just my little town and my little upbringing. I can probably relate 99% of the subject matter I photograph directly to those early influences. When I was in the Calais lace factory, I was able to go in factories, uh, you know, where the workers were were working, and the machines were, were going, and the ground was vibrating up and down, and there was terrifying noise. I mean, these huge machines, you know, these big black monsters, and oil everywhere, and just the ground vibrates. And then I was also able to see these factories slowly close down, and the workers move out. And then eventually the machinery move out, and then what was left behind after that, and then the, the kind of the plants begin to creep, and the windows being broken by vandals, and kind of the, just the general deterioration of the whole uh, factory. I witnessed that in a few different places. The Radcliffe Power Station. On one hand, we can see it as being an extremely ugly monstrosity, uh, sitting in, in the middle of quite a, a pristine uh, British uh, valley. One can also see it as um, quite an exquisite uh, 20th century piece of sculpture uh, that's extremely functional, uh, that we all need because we become dependent on electricity. And there is always that double-edged aspect, you know, this 
Well, what about the rainforest? You know, what about the pollution, the carbon monoxide? We live in a very imperfect world. Light meters, for the most part, don't work at night. Things happen at night that are beyond your control. It becomes impractical. I was regarded as something of a luxury to have two hours to, you know, to watch the stars or to see the clouds move or to, you know, to have an inner conversation or a conversation with the subject matter that you're photographing or just to listen and do nothing for two hours is, is, is in our very fast-paced, you know, chaotic, jumbled, multimedia, multicolor. You know, there's there's so much going on that it, it sometimes it's nice to take a little time off and, and in a sense meditate. Most recently, I've been uh, photographing in Japan for maybe three or four years very consistently now, particularly in the winter. Um, it's very stark. Um, in a sense, it's very zen-like. Um, many of the forms in the landscape for me resemble you know, kanji, uh, writing um, on a uh, you know, blank sheet of paper. Uh, they can be very beautifully abstract, uh, whether it's the trees or the fences uh, or the structures in, in water. You know, with Trees, for example, you know, I like to see the skeleton of the trees. Uh, I like to see the structure, the underlying form. Uh, but it's what, what's underneath that really draws me. It's more architectural somehow. When you work as a, as a photographer, particularly with nature, uh, you are part of a collaboration. You know, there's a symbiotic relationship going on. You're photographing wondrous things, and if you have a relationship with those wondrous things, then they tend to open up more. And what the photographer creates, in fact, the photographer is not creating. The photographer and the subject matter are creating it together.